So I'm Dan Kamen. I'm a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, and I direct the Renewable and Appropriate Energy Laboratory, where myself and my students study a wide range of clean energy solutions and options from solar to wind to biomass to ocean energy to energy efficiency. And we work internationally. We have teams working in Sacramento. We have teams working in Nicaragua, in East Africa, in China. We really try to be a place where we think about the energy system. And the reason why that's so important, and the topic that I will be describing today at UCLA, is really our need to think about energy holistically, to look at not only individual technologies, as exciting as they might be in the space of solar or wind or other areas, but to really recognize that energy is the biggest piece of the global economy. It's the largest source of foreign uh, payments the United States makes, so it's the biggest piece of our national debt. And it's also the area where in the last few years we have seen just dramatic changes in the technology, in particular of solar and wind and fuel cells, and my lab looks at all those. But we need to look at these in a way that brings them together, because we not only need to generate exciting new companies that might be bringing us solar cells or might be bringing new devices that are very efficient, but we need to find a way to reduce our overall greenhouse gas, our carbon emissions, by dramatic amounts, 80% over the next 40 years. And in the talk today, I'll be looking at some of the most exciting innovations on a technical side, on a financing side, on a public and behavior side, to try to bring all of these things, not one incremental step at a time, but in terms of very large changes to our energy system. So the topic for today is really focused around how individual exciting developments, and I'll highlight a few individual technologies, one in the information technology space, one in the solar area, one in efficiency, and financing changes to bring clean energy to markets, now finally give us a chance to think about an energy system that we want as opposed to one that we just simply happen to inherit. One of the innovations in my laboratory we've been spending a lot of time on in the last couple of years is trying to find the mechanisms to bring electric vehicles much more broadly to the market. One of the biggest hurdles, it turns out, for people to adopt a new kind of car, whether it's a cleaner car or not, is the fact that you need to know what its capacities are. You need to do a test drive. But there aren't many electric vehicles available today to do a test drive. So several of my students and I worked in the lab and then founded a small company to provide virtual electric vehicle test drives to people driving in their regular car. We actually built an application for the iPhone or the Droid or the Blackberry where you drive around and use the, ge uh, the geographic information facilities of your phone to mimic and understand your driving behavior, your distance, the hills, and then in software, we then recreate what your drive would have been like if it was an electric vehicle. We tell you about the energy savings or the cost for going green in your electric vehicle choice. And we also look at how fleets of vehicles would benefit financially and in terms of carbon emissions by driving hybrids, plug-in hybrids, or pure electric vehicles. So it's a wonderful marriage of information technology. And our need to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by roughly mid-century, by 2050, is a challenge that's on par with recreating the entire Industrial Revolution in 40 years, so in a third or less the time than the first Industrial Revolution. This is a challenge that we're ill-equipped to do, but thankfully we're finally seeing the rate of innovation and the new technologies coming up that give us a chance doesn't mean we'll get there, but we do have the tools in hand to think not only about how we might get solar panels on the rooftops of some affluent homes in California or New Jersey, but how we might get clean energy solutions built into very poor communities in the parts of East Africa where I work in the Rift Valley, on the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua where I have students, and in some of the most coal intensive parts of China where we have a major collaboration with our Chinese colleagues. So I will draw from these across the planet, but the message is really the same. We're innovating at a wonderfully fast rate. The question is, can we match technological change with economic and policy changes to really recreate the energy system? So I very much am delighted to be here today. I look forward to the conversations, and thank you very much for the chance to speak.